Hello, so, everybody. Welcome back to Exotic Astrology. We are with Vishri Larson, continuing on the Navamsha. So we discussed when the planets get activated and when Navamsha gets active. So please carry on. All right. So um, we were talking about Navamsha. And uh, so what I was trying to show is that the Navamsha is, and the Varga charts in general are used to confirm what the Rashi chart shows. Mm -hmm. And that means that we can be quite specific. And that also means that the Rashi chart can show a range of different things. All right? For example, we have this combination. Let's say Badakesh is in 12th house or 12th Lord is in Badakhstan. It is supposed to cause a person to be separated from their spouse. Okay? Yeah, it is. Badakesh in 12th, 12th order in Badakhstan, separation from spouse. It's a very good combination for other things in life, but the only problem is marriage, okay? The only problem. But you don't actually know what that means until you open the Navamsha, okay? You just know there's separation. So I had a chart recently that was there in the chart, and I said, oh, separation is there. Now, does it mean divorce? We don't know. Does it mean affairs? We don't know. Does it just mean that the person is traveling away from their spouse and then coming back to me with their spouse? Like I had a chart, the person, the, the, the couple was married and their spouse was in a different country for a few, for a half a year or for a year and he came back. He had to work, that's all. There was no infidelity, no divorce, no talk about it. They were amicable about the whole thing. They didn't like being apart and that's it. They came back. So the Navamsha is telling me exactly what is going on. I can be sure when I open the Navamsha, all right? Therefore, you can have cases where, the per where people have same Rashis, but the different Navamshas are completely changing lives. And I'm going to also introduce that. So with that, I think it's uh, of value for us to look at the slides, all right, that I have prepared for today. Now, let me see if I can just share this. So here's my Navamsha slide that I have tried to spice up for this occasion. And um, um, I, I was surprised the other day when somebody was asking me questions and I gave them an answer. And they said, oh, but the answer you gave me is related to Jaimini astrology. And or they, I told them something about, oh, you know, my teacher, my, uh, if you want to learn this, go and read that book from Sanjirat. And they said, but Sanjirat does Jaimini astrology. And then they were asking me questions. And then I said, but that's my teacher, you know. So it's really important that I point out my teacher is Sanjira. The Jyotish that we have learned is a mix of Parashara and Jemini, because that is the way the tradition is. Some people think that Parashara and Jemini are separate schools of Jyotish. In our, in our work, in our way where we, that we read charts, they are not separate schools of Jyotish. They're the same. They're the same Parampara. And this is our distinct uh, parampara, as far as we can, as far as back as we can remember, is from the tradition of Achyutananda Das, from Puri Orissa. So what I wanted to speak about is why we need Navamsha. Yes. Um, so Parashara considers Navamsha to be the strongest divisional chart. So I was speaking a bit about this earlier, all right? And then that is used for Bhagya also, according to Jataka Parijata. But it's very important for me to speak about the Navamsha in context of karma, all right? Because the reason why three-digit charts are important in Jyotish, Rashi, Navamsha, Shasti, Yamsha, is because they show karmas. Distinctly, Shasti, Yamsha is like all the karma you have, all of it. The sun the karma, all of the karmas that are there. And the Navamsha is a filter for which some karmas are manifesting and some are not. So imagine Shasti Amsha on top and the rain is coming down with karmas and then it reaches Navamsha and then there's a nice big filter which says, no, no, these chunks are left for another life. Okay? So the Navamsha is like that filter. And so we call it Prarabdha karma. Now I'm sure some people will correct me if my terminology is wrong, but this is the terminology I learned. And the beauty of Navamsha is we can also say, how hard are the karmas going to be in this life? In fact, try this simple, small thing. Whatever is your Navamsha Lagna, that is your, what we call, your blessing from the last life. Because the Navamsha Lagna indicates that 
uh, that karma or that activity that you have already performed in a good way, in a beneficial way, the best activity you've performed in your last life. And whatever that is linked to in your Rashi chart, you have already done remedies for that in, this, uh, in the last life. Yes. For example, let us say you have... Um, Let's say you have this hard curse, like you have Venus afflicted by two or three malefics in the Rashi chant. Some people will have easy life based on that, and some people will have a hard life. Those who have the easy life are those who has Lagna being Taurus or Libra in the Namash. Yeah, because they've already done the remedy in the last life, and in this life the remedy will come very easily, even before the problem starts. They will get the remedy. So the Navamsha can completely alter the karmas of the Rashi chant. And this is one small point, Navamsha Lagna. Now, what is Navamsha for? It's for a lot of things. Parashara says, Navamamsha, Kalataranam, the ninth division shows spouse or marriage in general. So this we know, people have said that, okay? But it is also for other things. It is for the entire Bhagya, okay? The entire Bhagya, Jataka Parijata confirms this. All the Bhagya is decided in Navamsha. And our tradition uses it to understand what is going on. But a very important aspect of Bhagya is marriage. And we consider the spouse one of the most important forms of Bhagya. All right? And therefore, because the, the marrying means you're sharing your life with somebody, your Su Bhagya and Lur Bhagya is very relevant in marriage as well. As well. But even before you marry, it is relevant. And if some people doesn't, some person doesn't marry, it will also show in the Navamsha chart they've decided not to marry. All right? So, but without Navamsha, we cannot confirm what's happening in marriage, nor can we confirm what the Bhagya is. All right. So that's what it's for. But in essence, it's for everything. At this stage, it's of value for me to start speaking about how to interpret. Okay? And this is the most important part of these slides and this presentation I'm bringing to forth today. How to exactly interpret Navamsha? Because I have heard some people say that they, use, they read the Navamsha the same way they, they, that they do the Rashi chart. But um, um, I, I've had colleagues who have also brought that forth in the early parts of when we were studying, you know, colleagues of mine who learned from somewhere, somewhere else, and then they came to the tradition and said, okay, this is what they've been doing. They learned this and they read it in a book. And, and our teacher was uh, uh, my Guruji. He, he quickly clarified, no, we don't. Why not? You cannot see your ninth house in Navamsha to see your father. Okay. You cannot see the fourth house in your Navamsha to see your mother. It's not possible. The fifth house in your Navamsha is not for children. All right. The only thing that stays the same is the seventh house and spouse. The rest of the houses do not stay the same. They do not. It does not mean you should not use the Navamsha to see these people, but you don't read the houses the same. Okay? So we don't actually use it the same as the Rashi chart. I don't know any divisional chart which is the same as the Rashi chart. None. Except maybe Shasti Yamsha. Because Shasti Yamsha shows everything. So the only divisional chart which may be able to be used the same as the Rashi chart is the D60 Shasti Amsha. But even then, the connotations of the predictions are completely different. Okay? So, let me give you some examples of how the Navamsha is different. See, if I take the Rashi chart, if the Lagna Lord is in Dushtana, 6th, 8th, or 12th in Rashi, it shows poor thoughts and ill health. The ill health depends on the sun, by the way. I will not just say ill health just like that if Lagnesh is in Dushtana. Okay, in Rashi Chan. So don't do that either. You need to check the sun also. Okay. Well, you can be sure there's poor thoughts. You can be sure. Because Lagna is like the supercomputer and the Lagna Lord is how, how you're using the supercomputer. If it's in a bad house from the Lagna, it means you're not using it properly. In fact, you have a lack of availability of good thoughts. Parashara considers this a Daridra Yoga. You know? He considers not having good thoughts as Daridra, poverty. Okay. So he'll write in the Dridra Yoga Dhyaya, Lagnesha and Dushtana is the Ridra Yoga. But he's not explaining what type of Dridra. It's Lagna Dridra. Poor thoughts. So the person needs remedies for maybe uh, depression. Could be. Okay. 
but maybe there's ill health. Again, that maybe depends on the sun. It's not automatic. Now, instead, if I take the Navamsha as my focus, and I say Lagna Lord of Navamsha chant, placed in Dushtana in the Navamsha chant, it will not give ill health. It will not give poor thoughts. It shows somebody who doesn't want to marry. Oh, sorry. Okay. So lag, if, the, if I take Navamsha chart in isolation and see the Navamsha Lagna Lord and see if it's in Dushtana in Navamsha, it just means the person doesn't want to marry. Similarly, let's say I open the D10 chart for career. I open that chart and the, that's the D10, uh, uh, D10, Dashamsha. If the Lord of the Dashamsha Lagna is in Dushtana in Dashamsha, you don't want to work. Okay, not interested in a career, doesn't want to work. All right. Siddhamsha, D24, is used for education. If the Lagna Lord of the Siddhamsha is in Dushtan and Siddhamsha, you don't want to study. Completely different connotations, right? That's because only the Rashi indicates the body. All right? Even the other divisional charts relevant for health do not show the body. Okay? Trimshamsha D30 is used for disease, but it doesn't show the body. It shows whether you're willing or not to recover from ill health. All right. Are you willing to deal with your health concerns? Are you willing to remedy your life, overcome your weaknesses? That's D30 chart. So the Rashi chart is the only one indicating the body. Hint, that means all the events which are occurring to your body must be seen in the Rashi chart. Because when you marry somebody, you're getting, you're sharing your body, sharing your space around your body with somebody else. Therefore, your marriage is also relevant in Rashi Chant. If you go to school, your body is going to school, right? Your brain is going to school. So then the Rashi Chant is relevant. Okay? So Rashi is showing everything. Okay. So we have to touch upon that in a minute. We'll talk about other divisional charts. But the divisional chart is different from the Rashi Chant. It is always different. Now, there are further very different results which can come from Rashi and Navamsha. Like we just touched Rashi in isolation and Navamsha in isolation just now, isolation just now. Now, imagine if I take some further interpolations here. Watch this. If the Lord of the Rashi Lagna, so this is D1, right? Lord of D1 Lagna, is placed in Dushtana in D9. So, for example, example, uh, let us say, uh, let's say a person has a Mesha Lagna. Maz is Lagnesh. And Mangal is in uh, Navamsha in uh, Mina, Paishis. And the Lagna in the Navamsha is Kansa. Mm -hmm. That is now, Maz is now in trines, right? So I will say the person is going to be fat. Okay? So conversely, had that Maz been. Uh, let's say the Navamsha Lagna was now Simha. Now Mars is in Paishis Navamsha in 8th house. The person will be skinny. Okay? So like that, the Rashi Lagna Lord placed in the Navamsha, seen from Navamsha Lagna, will tell me how is the bo bodily appearance. Okay? Completely different now. All right? How much Bhagya did your body get? Okay? Now try this. If the Lord of the Navamsha Lagna, seen in the Rashi chart, is in Dushtana, the person can have long-term ill health and risk development issues. All right? Development issue, issues means that there could be issues in, in academic development or even physical development. Okay? Uh, these, not need, need not, these issues need not come from birth also. It can also be later on in life, the person suddenly gets a health issue and suddenly they cannot do anything. They cannot work nothing. So that is Navamsha Lagna Lord badly placed in the Rashi chart. This is because that Navamsha Lagna is trying to deal with as much karma as possible. And you're actually paying for your karma through that Navamsha Lagna Lord. That means the body is now becoming the means to overcome all the karmas of last life. This can mean the person has to take a step back in their life because of health. All right? So these are some of the results. And you can see, I, I've not used anything the same way as I've used the Rashi chart here. 
You see, they are very different results. Now, some basic principles so that we can really start using this. There is one Rashi chart, and there are 15 divisional charts, and this makes up the Shoda Shavarga, 16 divisional charts. Okay? The 15 divisional charts correspond to the 15 tithi, Paksha, 15 tithi, right? We say there are 15 tithi in the bright half, 15 tithi in the dark half. And the reason I'm saying 15 is the relevant number is because in the dark half, the tithis repeat, same ones repeat, you know? So that means these 15 divisional charts are like tithis. Right? Each of them is like one titi. Now, what, is, what, is, what do we say about titi? There's this concept in India, a titi deva bhavan. Right? So that, that is that the, the, the guest is considered a representative of God. Right? So, so these guests are the 15 divisional charts. All right? 15 divisional charts are our guests. And these guests are entering our Rashi chart. This is our life and leaving. But they don't always stay. Navamsha is the only one which really tries to stay. Okay? And so, really, what's happening is you, as a Rashi, your body is going and visiting these people, these areas, these 15 guests, or they're visiting you. And these are like the world which are deciding our destiny. They are deciding our destiny. For example, D24 is your classroom. D10 is your office. D9 is your marriage and dharma. All right? These are very important parts of our life. But yeah, you have to go and see them. You have to go and interact with them. One thing I wanted to ask you, I forgot. So I think I will ask you now. So as you, as you beautifully described that, we don't read the divisional charts the same way. So one question which people always ask is, suppose my Lagna Lord in the Rashi chart is in a particular house, so that has a meaning. So what is exactly or the meaning or how do you see that if the Lagna Lord of the Navamsha is placed in a particular house? Like for Dustanas, you explain that the person is not interested to marry. But uh, in general, if it is placed in a particular house, say ninth house or 5th house, 10th house, 11th house, so what is the indication? I mean, what's the sutra for that? Okay, so um, each house is different. Even the Dushtanas are different in results. Okay, um, but uh, I can put it across in this way. If, uh, if the Lord of a house is in Dushtana from its house, it means that that house is not available. Okay, all right. Um, you could use this even in Rashi Chan. Let's say your uh, fifth Lord is placed in the 10th house. Right now, you people say, Oh, fifth lord in 10th house, that's very good, but it's in Dushtana from the fifth house. Okay, so it means children or students or supporters are not available. All right, so what's happening is, is that if the lord of a house is in Dushtana from its house, it's not easily available. It may be good for the individual, but not available to that house. Okay. For example, fifth lord in tenth is good for the lagna, but not good for the fifth house. All right. So, so now next step. So each of the house groups, dushtana we heard is not easily available. Okay. Um, three third and eleventh houses, tricky houses. They are very tricky houses. We call them trika or upachaya, right? Trika or upachaya. If they're malefics, they're trika, which means you're being punished somehow. Okay? If they're benefics, upachaya, you're growing. All right? These third and eleventh houses are very critical houses. Critical in the sense that they are critiquing you all the time. Okay? Constantly criticizing. Malefics, definitely criticizing. Benefics, they're encouraging you. Grow, 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 grow. Right? So here, critical means critiquing. Right? Criticizing houses, I should use that term, right? Criticizing. So 3rd and 11th are like that. The 4th uh, and 10th and 1st and 7th are houses which give clean, pure support. All right? Clean, pure support. So if the, if the Lord of our house is in Kendra from itself, it gives clean, pure support. Don't think about Kendra Dosha here. Forget that for a minute. That won't really work. 
in this type of interpretation, that principle won't work. All right? I know people are thinking Kendra Dipate Dosha. Forget that for now. Kendra is so, solid support. Solid support. That is supporting you and giving you support. All right? We use Kendra Dipate Dosha, but it's a, we need to avoid that topic for now. All right? Now, fifth and ninth, we call them uh, their corners. And corners are a bit like they're sharp, they're edgy. All right? So the problem with the corners are, these fifth and ninth, is that they are supporting you, but they have uh, uh, what we call a criteria. Okay? Yes. So for the fifth house, they must listen to you. For the ninth house, you must listen to them. <laughs> okay? That's because they treat you as if you are a, uh, what we call um, a, a child or an adult. All right? So this is what we call generation gaps. So they're not easy. All right? The, the best are Kendra. Second house is uh, interesting. Second house uh, can be good or bad. Both. And uh, that really depends on planets there. But it always sustains you. All right? So those are the house groups. Okay? I think that covers them all. Yes, yes. So, so that is the easy way to approach them. Now the, then you can go into distinctions. All right? Yes. So we'll do the next part in the next session. Okay? <laughs> I'm never going to stop. Huh? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Bye.